All right, so we're just going to dive right into it. So I've been experimenting with something pretty interesting. I'm using the Mind Palace technique pretty heavily for this exam. In fact, not only did I create kind of this matrix of 21 gram negative bacteria in this layout that it, I know it doesn't look like a house, but I've labeled these all parts of a house. This is a basement at the bottom floor, a middle floor, and then a top floor with like bedrooms and stuff. I have a driveway, I have a backyard. What I did is I went through a 102 slides and for each one of these, I pulled out five things that I thought were important. Now, some of these didn't have five things like Bartonella here only had a couple. Some of them I kind of had a reach to make five. Some of them had way more than five like Neisseria gonorrhea, actually, I pulled out like 10 things. So I just doubled what I did for that. The treatment doesn't count. So I basically have a mnemonic for the name, the treatment, and then uh, five separate things that I can do. So I started here in the garage and over the period of the past few days, basically built out a story spatially placing all of these bullet points into a path across an entire house. And I have nearly the entire thing memorized. So it's taken a few days. I mean, it's been a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. But it's basically 150 plus bullet points of information that I have memorized. I think why this is important is because when I was studying for exams in the past, I was using flashcards and I was using Anki and... I was picking up on buzzwords and I was picking up on like, what's the most common this, but I really could never speak about a disease as a whole. I couldn't walk you through what is this? How do you get this? How do you treat this? I'd kind of freeze up. It's like you study something so heavily, like, you know, the liver, and then you're asked like a simple question of like, well, what is the, tell me about the liver. And you kind of can't. So in this case, you could ask me about any one of these 21, and I could tell you at least five facts about it. I could tell you how to treat it. Um, you know, there's little bits and pieces that I, I forget, but what I've been doing is as I repeat these, I give myself like a little tick mark here. And it's actually a kind of a nice way to gamify this a bit. So these here are repetitions the same day I created this. Blue is another day. Uh, you know, at least a day after, and then purple is at least three days after. So you can see once building this four or five, so I've, um, I've repeated this front to back seven times. It doesn't take long. It takes about 48 minutes to recite the entire thing, probably a little bit quicker, uh, quicker, but, but it worked. And this is the original list of I mean, these are these are words I've never heard of before. Eichenella corrodens and Gardnerella vaginalis and Campylobacter jejuni. Like, there's a lot of just crazy things in here, but this worked. It was it was really really effective. So, um, and I I loosely used like the layout of an old house I used to live in. If you can relate these to real locations and real places, it helps. But a lot of this, I mean, this I put in. Pastorella, I put in an imaginary backyard with like a drive-in movie theater. Pseudomonas, I put inside of a, an imaginary greenhouse. Neisseria gonorrhea is just on, uh, it's just like, that's actually the site of a car accident. And then it's just like somebody's random house that doesn't exist. I just kind of imagine it. So here's the plan. So the problem now is that I have gram negative covered. I have to do gram positive. And that's still only two PowerPoints of an 11 PowerPoint exam. And I have uh, like less than a week to prepare for this. Here's what I think is really important. And this is what I've kind of really stumbled upon. It's about going through your PowerPoints and organizing things so that they're extremely tangible. It's so what I did for strep pneumo, for example. It's about saying, hey, strep pneumo is a thing and again, tell me about it. So I've built these kind of little mini mnemonics that go into this. So for this one, it's men SOP. So it basically tells you what are the manifestations of strep pneumo? Well, it's men SOP. It's meningitis. It's sinusitis, otitis media, and pneumonia. 
And then I kind of go through, go through and I try to get things down to numbers that I remember like, hey, I'm going to memorize three things about a Titus media. I'm going to remember three things about uh, pneumonia, you know, plus the treatment. Some of the treatments here are actually quite complicated. So I, I try to get things down to like a nice, either even number or round number. It doesn't always fit that way. But enterococcus, I got to a really nice solid list of five. And then you go up here to uh, like group A strep, strep pyogenes. Again, a little bit more complicated, but I was able to get it into this nice mnemonic spice and then just letter N. So scarlet fever, pharyngitis, impetigo, cellulitis, and then erysipelas. Uh, that's spice. And then um, the N is necrotizing fasciitis. So I have three things for group B strep, two things for, for uh, group D strep. So this is all of streptococcus. For staph aureus, I did it similarly, but staph aureus has enough content by itself that I had to put it into like four different parts. It's a little bit more complicated. These final six, the three clostridium, uh, not including C. diff, and then Listeria, bacterium, Diphtheria, and then Bacillus, I was able to get into a really nice matrix of five, five, five. These are all five things, except for Clostridium perfringens. Looks like I was only able to get, actually, that doesn't make sense. Actually, that could be five. I just kind of screwed up with that. But anyway, we'll fix that later. My goal for this session is to go through at least strep pneumo. And I'm going to see if I can use locations from movies, specifically Toy Story, and characters from Toy Story to place things in these locations around, uh, around Andy's room. And using characters from this movie to see if that is helpful. Because my hypothesis is using mind palaces per minute of your time as a student are actually the most, it's actually the, the most efficient way to study and the most long lasting and the most fun. So let's put this into practice and let's see what we can do here. The other, the other thing that I'm doing is I've converted all of, I've converted all of the antibiotics into either celebrities or, or items or people. And I'll give you an example. So, and we're going to start getting into new medications here because gram negatives did not mention a lot of beta lactams or the early gen cephalosporins or things like that. So for example, augmentin is men in black. So augmentin uh, or Will Smith. I'm going to take away the aliens there. Piperzillin, uh, tazobactam is uh, like piping hot tazo tea. I didn't I actually did, thought of that today piping hot Tazo tea or anything tea related. I use the teacups from Beauty and the Beast to remember some uh, treatments for pseudomonas. Cephataxime because of the word tax, like tax fraud is either Leonardo DiCaprio or Jordan Belfort or Wolf of, Ra Wolf of Wall Street. Ceftriaxone, which is row seven, which I always like to think of the rock in that is Dwayne the Rock Johnson or Stone Cold Steve Austin or a rock itself. Ceftazidime, I think of tasing somebody who owes you a dime. So that's Tony Soprano. Azithromycin is anything that has to do with, you know, acne or a zit or anything erupting or uh, like acne cream. Erythromycin is Clifford the Big Red Dog. Metronidazole are just flags or flagpoles. Bactrim is just cutting hair. Edward Scissorhands, barbers, scissors. Gentamycin is like a gentle flock of doves. And vancomycin is any type of shoe, like Vans footwear. And I found that that's actually very, very helpful, helpful because you can combine, you can combine things like uh, clindamycin. I just think of like Bill Clinton as, as the president, you know, you could picture him uh, like cleaning his face because he has a bunch of zits. That is infinitely more memorable. You will never forget that 
than just remembering the word and the, you know, this medicine that there, there's nothing tangible about the word clindamycin. And if you Google it, it's just a pill, right? So, you know, these all kind of look the same when you're actually looking at them. Like you can never really tell the difference, but turning it into a celebrity, oh, it just works so well. All right. So anyway, enough talking. Let's actually walk through this process and I'll show you how this works. So I've already gone through and combed through this. So we're going to do strep pneumo. So I have this men SOP mnemonic. So we're going to start with the probably the most important manifestation of strep pneumo. That's going to be bacterial meningitis. Okay. The character that I'm going to put this into is Buzz Lightyear. So basically this story begins. We have to kind of start this story here. And that's, uh, you know, we enter into Andy's room. And Buzz in Toy Story started off on the bed. You can actually see the bedspread there. But when it's like rocket ship landed, he was, he was on there. So we enter into Andy's room and see Buzz Lightyear spaceship on the bed. So this is where we're going to begin. This is the location. Um, why Buzz for meningitis? He's a man, I guess. And it's just something we have to remember here. So he's a man. Buzz is a man equals meningitis. The very first thing I always set up is just what is the name of what we're talking about? Okay. You know, buzz is a man. And then kind of the B in buzz reminds us of bacteria. We just have to remember we're talking about strep pneumo here. Okay. So we need to knock out the treatments first. So ceftriaxone is going to be either the rock or... Uh, this is actually a good one. So we throw a rock at the spaceship to see if there's any activity. All right. So that is our clue for ceftriaxone. However, one of the really important things with meningitis is that you need to include a steroid either before or with it. Is this 11? And a really good, we'll say, but nothing happens. So we remember that we need to add some extra oomph, even though this isn't metabolic steroids, it's still going to help us remember that. And we add on some dexamethasone. So you want to put those together. Okay. Still nothing happens. So we realize we're missing the other part. Of this treatment, which is vancomycin. So that's footwear. So guess what else we're going to be throwing at this spaceship? We're going to take off our shoe and we're going to throw our shoe and hopefully arouse Buzz Lightyear. Not in that way. So we take off our shoes and throw those as well. Who throws a shoe? I mean, honestly. Okay. Infinitely more memorable than any other way to, to remember that information. Okay. So finally, Buzz Lightyear emerges from his ship and has a very important announcement. I, bacterial meningitis, caused by strep pneumo and the most common cause of meningitis. The other type of meningitis that's number two is Neisseria, but that is gram negative. All right. So that's just kind of something we have to remember. So usually the real bullet point that I want to remember here is going to be in bold here. So this is really, I don't count the name and the medication as part of the five, and this one actually is six. So we're just going to remember that this is six things. So this is really the first bullet point. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you'll see. Okay. So this causes hydrocephalus and it also causes deafness. So these are two things. So how could we remember this? Uh, we realize we can't hear buzz. We are deaf. But also because his helmet has filled with fluid, 
reminding us that meningitis causes both deafness and hydrocephalus. And I'm, I'm making all of this up just off the cuff. I did see like the high, I saw some of this. I was like, this would probably be good for like Buzz Lightyear, the hydrocephalus I thought of. Um, all right. So he tries to announce this, but we can't hear him because we're deaf and he has hydrocephalus. Presentation here for fever, nausea, stiff neck. I'm going to get rid of that. I mean, at this point, I think I kind of know the treatment for men and or the presentation for meningitis. We're going to get rid of that. It's really nonspecific too for a lot of this, other than the neck stiffness, but I kind of know that by now. So we're going to switch this to a five, which is actually good. Five is a lot easier to remember because there's just two, two to begin, a nice solid middle, and then two to end. Okay. We do want to know, though, that there's cranial nerve three and six palsies. So three is going to be ocular motor. Six is going to be abducens. So is this, uh, if three and six are out, the only thing left is four, which is going to go down. So is this like a, is this like a down and out type of situation? A CN three and six palsy? is not difficult to perceive. There's six nerve palsy. Three is gonna be down and out. All right, we're just gonna remember three and six. So this is going to be oculomotor and six. So let's see, how could you remember that? This is the third thing. Do we, re do we remember the actual nerves? Oculomotor. Yeah, yeah, we could we could kind of do something like that. So Buzz notices the motor of his spaceship is broken. Abducens is like uh it's been ab abducted by aliens. <laughs> Reminding us that I'm just gonna say BM for bacterial meningitis can cause cranial nerve three and cranial nerve six palsies. All right. All right, now we need to know, uh, so, uh, so we're gonna do a lumbar puncture, right? So, so he's fixing this, this motor. So Buzz, uh, you know, kind of wheels underneath the spaceship to fix it. But there's a leak of CSF getting all over the place. The findings are as follows. Uh, increased opening pressure, right? Okay, that's actually not mentioned here. I, I actually don't know if that's true. The findings are as follows. It's turbid, which I think just means it's like cloudy, right? Yeah. It's turbid, cloudy. Um, sugar should be down. Everything else should be up, like protein. Yeah. It's turbid. So these are pretty common findings for meningitis. Big thing there is that glucose is down. So four things we need to remember there. Okay, other invasive syndromes like endocarditis. Yeah, so this I thought was actually pretty interesting. So your peritoneum, your heart, so endocarditis, it can actually cause uh, the pericardium and on like the inside as well. So how are we going to remember that? I mean, invasive is certainly aliens. Um, maybe like the room goes dark. Suddenly the room goes dark and the aliens flood in. And we'll say like exploding our hearts. The more violent this gets, actually the more memorable it'll be. And the, alien, and the aliens flood in, exploding our hearts because we have endocarditis and pericarditis. I don't really care about the peritonitis there. Okay, here's the important thing. As soon as you're done your list, you need to free recall the entire thing from memory. So we walk in to Andy's room. 
we see Buzz Lightyear because see a spaceship up on the bed. All right. Where are we? We're in Andy's room. This is going to be strep pneumo. We're talking about bacterial meningitis. Okay. We're trying to get this spaceship to uh, the person in there to come out. So we throw a rock. So that's ceftriaxone. That's rocephin. Okay. Doesn't work. We need to up, up the ante a little bit. We add a glucocorticoid. So you want to treat with both of those or put the glucocorticoid corticoid before. Still no movement. We forgot to add something really important here, and that's going to be vancomycin. Uh, why do we remember that? Because we took off our shoes and we threw them at the spaceship. Okay. So now we can start the five. So we got the name of it and we got the treatment. Okay. Uh, the spaceship opens up. Buzz Lightyear comes out. He announces he's the most common cause of uh, just meningitis in general, right? So bacterial from strep pneumo, most common cause of meningitis. Neisseria meningitis is going to be number two. That's one. We realize we can't hear him because we've gone deaf and his helmet fills up. So he has hydrocephalus. Okay. So that's two. The third thing is that he notices his, um, I, you can even like think of his eyes going crazy. I think that actually happened in, uh, in one of the scenes. So his motor's broken. Um, what did I even say for Abdul? I, I remember three to six. So I don't even remember the whole mnemonic we made, but it's cranial nerves three and six. Um, so that was that. So I'm sorry. We did. He announced he's the most common. We did cranial nerves three and six. Oh, he announced he's the most common. We had the deafness and hydrocephalus. Uh, we have the cranial nerve three and six palsies. And then what happened next? Um, we have the invasive thing. Oh, um, yeah, everything goes dark. That's the fifth one. I'm missing the fourth one here. Oh, the CSF, right. He realizes his motor is broken. Remember, we tied those two together. He goes underneath, there's a CSF leak. So we have turbidity, so it's cloudy. Uh, we have high protein, high white blood cell content, low glucose. Fifth, everything goes dark. The aliens come in. We clutch our chest. We get endocarditis. We get pericarditis and we get peritonitis. We'll throw that in there. Okay. Now immediately you go through and you make sure you got everything. If you didn't get anything, then you just highlight it. But we are, we are good. It took us a second to get some of those, but we just recalled all of that in the same order. And what I like to do is give myself a little tick mark to know that, hey, I just memorized um, all of bacterial meningitis in what, less than five minutes? So as I continue to do that, I'll make sure I recall that. We're going to kind of recall this over and over again, and it's really going to stick. Okay, so we're done that. We're going to move on to, again, this like cardinal mnemonic here is men SOP. So we're already done with men. And we can move on to the S. So this is going to be sinusitis. And really, we don't, the only thing I have here is the treatment. So we're going to link sinusitis and otitis media together. Because sinusitis is just the inflammation of your sinuses, right? All right. So number two is going to be sinusitis and of Titus Media. And that's going to be Mr. Potato Head. And you'll know why I chose him in a second. You might be piecing that together yourself. Okay. Do we want to next? Uh, let's say we go to like a bedside table. We hop over to the bedside table next and find Mr. Potato Head. He's lost both his nose and his ear pieces, reminding us we're talking about sinusitis and otitis media which is a middle ear infection. All right, so the treatment for this, it's amoxicillin or augmentin. So amoxicillin 
I've actually never used that. We have never used amoxicillin in the entire gram negative lecture. So my connection there is a boxing glove or Muhammad Ali. Anything boxing related or Rocky as well. So amoxicillin, a box of So you can kind of put that together, right? How did I use the word potato six times in this PowerPoint? Okay, so you could really, you could punch him, he could punch us. Um, uh, Rocky and The Rock with Rosefin actually has a too high chance of uh, interference. So we're gonna get rid of that because that's a little bit too close to comfort for me. I mean, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> Whatever. I'm not going to confuse him and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Okay, so yeah, we just need to remember uh, boxing glove. I don't know. I don't want to hurt the guy. Kind of says Anatitis Media. Here we go. Mrs. Potato Head comes over and just, just clobbers him him with a boxing glove we have to tie augmenting in here too which is will smith or or men in black this potato comes over and clobbers him with a boxing glove and she says i didn't know you met will smith you know he's my favorite Mr. Potato Head turns around and we see he has these cool sunglasses that make him look like he's from Men in Black. Okay, reminding us that the treatment here is augmentin or amoxicillin for sinusitis from Shreb Pneumo. Good to know. I'm sure we'll have a lot of patients with that. For both sinusitis and OM are myxillin or augmentin. Okay, there we go. All right, now this should just be three things. So this part is gonna be specific to otitis media. So we kind of have to just remember that so we're moving on to otitis media now. All right, so it's the most common pneumococcal syndrome is otitis media. So pneumococcal, just pneumococcal in general is gonna be the type of bacteria here. Oh, is that just literally a synonym for strep pneumo? I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, he opens up his back hatch and we see that he actually has nothing but ears in there. A cornucopia of ears, if you will. They're pierced. Some have gauges, some are attached, like when this is attached, right? Some are free. I don't even remember what that's called. Um, it's not the auricle, is it the pinna? I think the pinna is the whole thing. Is it the tragus? I think it's the tragus. Because then you have, oh no, it is the auricle. Oh yeah, tragus is up here. Some are attached, some are free, etc. Reminding us that uh, otitis media is the most common pneumococcal syndrome. Didn't know that. Interesting, right? Okay. Proceeding URI to ear infection. Uh, you get this from a 
proceeding you are it's just kind of like common sense i don't think we need to have a crazy thing for this to your ear and then just know that sinusitis exists uh, i really think we just need to know this is the most common honestly i think we can get rid of both of these Vir usually get viral first and then bacteria come so we're gonna we're gonna simplify this even more we're gonna call that a one we kind of know how you get that that's really it that's all we're gonna remember so now what we'll do is we're going to recite that and we're gonna recite We're going to recite Buzz Lightyear, and then we're going to get to that. So we walk into Andy's room. We see a spaceship up on the bed, right? Where are we? This is Strep Pneumo, and we're going to be talking about bacterial meningitis because Buzz the man. Okay. To get his attention, we throw a rock at him. So Rosefin, it doesn't work. We're going to add some dexamethasone. We realize we're missing part of the treatment. We throw a shoe. That's vancomycin. That's going to be the treatment for bacterial meningitis. Okay. Um. We finally get his attention. He announces he is the most common cause of meningitis. So strep pneumo, bacterial meningitis, most common. Neisseria is going to be the second most common. Uh, we realize we can't hear him. We've gone deaf from this meningitis, and he has hydrocephalus, okay? He realizes his motor is broken. So that's our just clue that uh, you have oculomotor three and six palsies here. Um, four is going to be that CSF finding. So it's going to be cloudy. Sugar is going to be down. White blood cells, protein are going to be up. Everything goes dark. There's an alien invasion. We have endocarditis. We have pericarditis. We have peritonitis. We go over to the bedside table to talk to Mr. Potato Head. All right. The treatment here actually might be the, the, the most, uh, complex. Anyway, Mr. Potato Head is, uh, this is the, the SO of men, SOP. So this is sinusitis, otitis media. He's missing his nose. He's missing his ears. Okay. Um, treatment here. Uh, he gets punched in the face with a boxing glove. So that's amoxicillin because he didn't tell Mrs. Potato Head that he, uh, he went to meet uh, Will Smith. So uh, Augmentin is going to be the other treatment option there. Okay. And then simply he opens up his hatch. All these ears start falling out. So otitis media is going to be the most common manifestation of pneumococcal, of, of strep pneumo. Okay, so again, we double check. We make sure we didn't miss any details here from the proceeding. We get a second tick mark here. And because we just recited this immediately, we're going to get one there. All right, we are actually almost done with all of strep pneumo. I thought this was going to be a lot more confusing. Okay, pneumonia. So we're going to be talking about wheezy, the... The penguin. So, wheezy, uh, this is going to be pneumonia. Definitely an important one because it's in the name, right? So, pneumonia. So, this is going to be wheezy. So, the first time you see wheezy in Toy Story 2, he is up on a shelf. So, we are going to Hop way up high. I don't know that you can actually see that in this picture. Actually, yeah, there's Woody up there. So we'll say Wheezy's up there. Wheezy Toy Story 2 shelf. Yeah, there you go. It's a good visual. And I went way up high to the bookshelf to meet Wheezy, who is coughing up a lung. It's pneumonia. I didn't bold this. The final manifestation of strep pneumo. Okay, treatment here. Always something I have struggled to remember. So out is going to be simply a macrolide or doxycycline in is going to be levo. Okay. So outpatient. So I already have an idea here. So macrolide, to pull this up a third time. I think macrolides are like, for me, going to be like computers and electronics. 
Oh, that's the thing. It's not a specific. In that case, I usually just pick one. I think that's much easier. You know what I mean? Like, let's see what Hippocrates says. I usually just pick one. Strep. Numo. Or maybe pneumonia. Community acquired outpatient. Yeah, but does it say the bug? They're actually using beta lactam plus either a macrolide. Yeah, it just says azithromycin. So we're just going to go with azithromycin or doxy. That's interesting. Outpatient, it does have, it has a combo there. Are we sure? Yeah, I mean, before we, we encode this into some crazy mnemonic, we definitely want to make sure we're accurate, right? How many times has pneumonia mentioned? 24 times. Strep pneumo. Sinusitis median sinusitis are non-invasive infections for what it's worth. Mm. There we go. Beta lactimes are so sometimes using combination with fluoroquinolones or macrolides. Do we care enough about that? Probably not. I mean, something that says sometimes used, a lot of times in PA school, you kind of just have to take the L there. We are going to remember both for inpatient, which I think is important. I don't know why this has a star. Or macrolide in those with comorbidity. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just have to, it's a numbers game. You just have to hedge your bets here. So we are going to stick with macrolide or doxycycline, and we are going to go with, uh, let's go with azithromycin. That's kind of the most common here. Okay, so wheezy. We look outside, and see the treatment for outpatient management for, um, I think mostly this is community acquired pneumonia assumed for strep pneumo, pneumo. So outside, all right, so doxy is going to be, uh, that's a bike for me. So cycle is like a bike and then do dox is gonna be anything with two wheels. Tetracycline, either the class in general or the actual med, is going to be like a four wheeler, like a car or something. Um, oops. We see the paper boy on a bicycle. So that's Doxy. But he's hiding his face with the newspaper because of this horrible, uh, horrible acne. That's a zip in my son. All 
right? And that's and the color coding actually for me really helps. I actually remember this is just a bunch of orange. That's going to be like um, beta lactam stuff. Okay, so outpatient. We have two options here. Um, Levo or a combination. Okay. We ask Wheezy, well, you're inside, you're an inpatient. How are we going to treat you? And he says, well, if you'd simply just lift me off of this shelf, I'd be cured. So anything with like levitation is levo, levoquin, levofloxacin. So uh, fluoroquinolone is very, very strong by themselves. Good overall coverage, um, levofloxacin. Or you have another combo option. So macrolide comes back. So something with acne or cream and then the rock as well. Um, you know what? And he reaches behind the book and pulls out a slimy acne cream covered rock. We'll see if we can remember the same medication with two different mnemonics. This is a combination of rocephin and very important when you have meds that you give in combination. Um, oh, and this is IV azithromycin. I mean, they're inpatient. I guess we'll we'll know that. This is going to be ceftriaxone. Could just copy this. All my cefs are gray. Uh, okay, so kind of a double treatment thing there. We ask Wheezy what the symptoms for strep pneumo, pneumo are. And he gives us a single chill or what, rigor, rigor. Uh, and he gives us a single chill and starts coughing. I think that's the big one there. I think that single chill is a big one. Single chill, like the single block of ice where he used to live, right? Like a giant single, uh, I don't know, iceberg glacier and starts coughing. And then the last thing, so two more here. So low bar consolidation, I think that is really, really important. Um, we looked over to the corner of the room and noticed the television pops on and we see, this be like a lobe. So like an ear lobe. Yeah, let's connect it back to uh, Mr. Potato Head. Potato Head there with all of his ear lobes, reminding us that our x-ray finding is low bar. I mean, it's infiltrate too, but whatever, I'll try to remember both. But low bar, I think is the big consolidation. Low bar is the big uh, like buzzword there. TV is my mnemonic. Anytime I see that, it's just it's just going to mean an X-ray finding. So that's why I put that there. Um, okay, so urinary antigen assay kind of important here because not a lot of times can you do a urine test for pneumo. The other big one for that is going to be um, Legionella is going to be a big one for that. 
So um, before we leave Wheezy, he asked how we can tell for sure what he has. Well, there are two options. You can either pee in a cup for us. Where is your, how do you even, uh, never mind. <laughs> so that's the urine antigen. Or, and this is the gold standard, but much more invasive, the lung biopsy, which means we need to take out your squeaker, which is his lung. Okay, uh, that's it. So we're gonna start from the beginning again. We're gonna recall the whole thing. So, All right, sorry. So we walk into Andy's room and we see Buzz Lightyear up on the up on the bed. Where are we? This is strep pneumo, and we are talking about uh, bacterial meningitis. Okay, so we try to get his attention. So we throw a rock. That's rocephin, ceftriaxone. We doesn't work. So we have to up the dose a little bit, not up the dose, but we have to add some steroids because this is meningitis. So we add some dexamethasone that doesn't work because we're missing half of this treatment. We need to also take our shoes off and throw vancomycin at him as well. Okay. He finally wakes up. He announces he's the most common uh, type cause of meningitis. Neseria is going to be number two. We can't hear him because we've gone deaf and we have hydrocephalus. Uh, he has cranial nerve three and six palsies. CSF, we're going to have low sugar, high protein, high white blood cell count. And then it goes pitch dark, the aliens invade, we get pericarditis, endocarditis, and peritonitis. Okay. This is, this is so much fun. All right. Now we're going to move on to the bedside table. We have Mr. Potato Head, right? Uh, he's missing his nose. He's missing his ears. We're talking about sinusitis. We're talking about otitis media. How do you treat both of these? It's going to be amoxicillin and augmentin because uh, his wife, Will Smith, et cetera. Um, oh, maybe like Will Smith should have punched him and said like, keep my wife's name out of your mouth or something. That 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 works too. If Will Smith is doing the punching, just augmentin and amoxicillin. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, then he opens up his hatch and we see nothing but ears in there. So we know that otitis media is the most common manifestation from strep pneuma. Okay, moving on to go up to the shelf and we're going to talk to Wheezy. So Wheezy is, uh, why are we talking about this? This is pneumonia. We're going to go through treatments first. We're going to look outside. We see the paper boy riding on a bicycle, doxycycline. And then uh, he's covering his face because he's acne ridden, right? So that's going to be azithromycin. So those are our two options there. Or if they have comorbidities, beta-lactam and a fluoroquine alone. Sure. I think you do that because one hits typical bugs, one hits atypical bugs. Neither here nor there. But we're on the inpatient side and we're with Wheezy. And we say, Wheezy, how are we going to treat you if you're an inpatient? And he says, well... You can lift me off of this shelf with Levaquin, done. Or you can use a combination. It gives you this zit cream covered rock. So it's that's it's, it's rocephin and uh, zithromycin, right? If it's a covered rock, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure. We'll double check that. Okay. Then we have to recite actually what's going on with pneumonia. So can we go right into the single chill? 
We talk about, we talk about like how you get this. I don't think it really matters. We talk about the single chill and the cough is going to be a symptom here. We look over to the TV and we see the low bar infiltrate, all right, or the low bar consolidation. Um, we know we can do a urine antigen because uh, we say, can you pee in a cup for us? Um, and then we can also do the, the lung biopsy. Are there five things here? Am I miss I'm missing a big, am I missing a big piece of this puzzle? This might just be three, honestly. I think this is just three things. I want to commit to that. I'm pretty sure there's nothing else. We're up on the shelf. I mean, the medications themselves were enough to remember single chill, low bar consolidation, urine antigen and lung biopsy. I'm going to send it there and just say it was three things we remembered. Ah, oh, yes. All right, good. So we'll give, our, we'll give ourselves the one for that. We repeated these again. So now we have done Mr. Potato Head twice. We have done Buzz now three times. Dextrosifraxone, Fanco, most common, deafness, three and six, sinusitis, media, moxicillin, augmentin. Um, Tetis media is most common. We hit the doxy outside or the azithromycin. Inpatient, we did Levo or we did ceftriaxone and azithromycin again, single chill. All right, good. Okay, so, and eventually what I do is I'll hit like a stopping point. I'll stop repeating bacterial meningitis like with Buzz after a certain while because he's going to keep getting more and more and Wheezy's going to have to get a little bit. So I try to do it so that I repeat them all an equal amount of time. Times, uh, so that's it. We've memorized using spatial memory and characters from Toy Story, all of strep pneumo. I mean, this is a big, big, massive bug that we just got through. Um, strep viridans, we want to put this in like a different location technically, but we also have enterococcus. I mean, we might as well keep going. We have so many Toy Story characters in this room to remember that that was all strep pneumo. You know, you really just want to avoid, you want to avoid any type of interference with this. So the only thing about the strep viridans, we do want to know patients. What is Vanco for then? Oh, it's non-neutropenic. So there's only one thing here. Oh, neutropenic. Probably important because of the endocarditis here. Maybe we tie something in with the aliens. Let's do that. We'll tie this in with the aliens because of the endocarditis connection. So we'll do that real quick. I like this picture of Wheezy with the shelf. Let's... Not the highest resolution, but let's toss this in there. Yeah, and you might think like this is a waste of time. It's really not. I don't need to rewatch any lectures. I don't need to make or repeat flashcards. Um, this is for me. A way of studying that makes things stick. This is a good one. And your angry eyes, just in case. The more, the more visual you can make this, I think you you win. Well, I mean, we could probably do a picture for each. Let's do a picture for each one. Why not? I 
I want that one like right on the bed. The opening scene, kind of something like that. Oh, there's him with his eyes. There's the there's the cranial nerve three six palsy. Whatever, we'll choose that one. That works. <laughs> okay, so number two, is that what I have as number two? Yeah, so we are gonna try to go in order. So that's going to be Strep Vera Dan's. And this will be an alien. Okay. We make our way over to the pizza planet uh, alien claw, oh, the claw machine, and climb inside. How do we know that this is Vera Dan's? Dan's. Oh, well, let's say they're all dancing. All of the aliens are having a rave and dancing. It's Streptococcus Vera Dan's. Definitely a big endocarditis player here. Um, all right, so neutropenic, so a low level of white blood cells. Versus normal to win the patient. Okay. As soon as we walk in, before we walk in, there are two aliens in front of us. One is very pale and sickly and announces that he's neutropenic. How would we treat him? Well, we say, you just got, you just won yourself a new pair of tap shoes. So we give them to him. So that is going to be vancomycin. So vanco. Venko, the other alien, is like, well, I'm pretty healthy. Well, the rest of us, what can we get? So this is penicillin G. I have not used this yet for anything. I think this is a golf. Yeah, Tiger Woods or a golf ball. Well, the rest of us are pretty healthy. What can we get? And I say, well, well, if you want to take out that claw that's coming for you, you need a weapon. And I arm them all with golf clubs. So that is penicillin G. Neutropenia, so kind of a double thing here. Um, part of normal mouth flora. Um, do we care about that? Probably, because poor oral hygiene is probably going to... Yeah, all right. So how are we going to remember that? Um, oh, so all of the aliens. Let's get a picture here. Here we go. What is what is with the pictures?
It's like moving through this entire movie. We uh, just wait till we get to Sid's backyard. Wait till we get to Sid's house. Okay. All the aliens point upward, mouth agape. I don't want to like their mouths to be open. I'm just, I'm just wasting so much time. Oh, that works. That's a PNG too. All the aliens point upward, mouths agape, and the claw takes advantage of this. And shines the light into their mouths, showing them that Strep Viridans is, in fact, part of their normal, their normal mouth flora. They're all basically ticking time bombs. They all look at each other. Watch their hearts and they explode as they all have endocarditis from strep viridans. That's that's a simple, uh, it's really just two things. So I don't know, they can only hold up two fingers when they do this. It's endocarditis from strep viridans, okay. All right, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to recite that and then do them all, and I'm going to end with that one again. Okay, so um, why don't we skip Buzz? We're going to start with the second one this time. So we're going to start with Mr. Potato Head. So this is sinusitis and otitis media in the realm of strep pneumo. Um, treatment here is augmentin and uh, amoxicillin, right? Augmentin and amoxicillin, yes. And that's that's it. We just have to know that he has a bunch of ears, so otitis media is going to be the most common manifestation of strep pneumo. A lot of times I like to go through these in real time just to make sure I'm not missing anything. That's it, right? Yep, we'll give ourselves a three there to catch up to Buzz. Um, all right, then moving on to Wheezy. So we're up on the shelf with Wheezy. So this is pneumonia, of course. Outpatient is going to be doxycycline and uh, azithromycin, or if they're complicated, beta-lactam and fluoroquinolone. I'm like never going to forget that. Um Inpatient with Wheezy, we can either use Levaquin and get them off the shelf, or we can use a rock covered with azithromycin. So we can use ceftriaxone and we can use azithromycin. We ask Wheezy, what are the symptoms of this? He shivers once and uh, he coughs. Then uh, the TV comes on. We see that low bar consolidation on uh, on an X-ray. And then um, he says, well, how can, you how can you diagnose this? We say, well, where do you pee from? Can we get a urine sample? And then um, we, uh, we can do a lung biopsy. In fact, that is the gold standard. We need to pull that squeaker from you. All right, so that's two on Wheezy, which is good. Yeah, it's like a lot of treatments there, but very, I mean, look how 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 quickly you can memorize five different medicines. That's, that's really powerful stuff. Single chill, x-ray finding, lumbar consolidation, urine antigen, lung biopsy. Good, we got all of it. Okay, now the one we just created. Um, oh, the alien. Oh, I don't think I was, I, I was supposed to do that and then repeat it and, and I didn't. So we go in um, and we're talking about strep viridans now. This is the, the, the alien. So the treatment for this is, oh, so we go up and there's, there's, a, uh, there's two bouncers. So there's one that's pale and neutropenic. And he says, well, how can you, 
how can you treat me? I say, you just want a new pair of, because uh, they're all dance and beer dance, right? They just, uh, you just want a new pair of dance shoes. So that's vancomycin, it's Vans footwear. The other one's like, well, we're all fine. How can you treat us? And I'm like, well, if you want to take out that claw, you need a golf club. So it's going to be penicillin G. So these are the treatments there. They all look up, mouths open. That we shine a light in there and strep viridans, normal part of our mouth floor, pretty crazy, right? So if you don't take care of your oral hygiene, you're going to get endocarditis. That's what happens next. They all flush their hearts and they explode. Strep viridans, vanco, penicillin G, mouth flora, endocarditis. Okay, good. So strep viridans, it's 11, that gets a one. That is going to be uh, Pizza Planet Aliens. All right. I'll tell you what. Let's knock out Entera Caucus. And I think that's a really good init initial session here before a break to knock out this whole the whole bottom part of this. Um, this one looks a little bit complicated. So we're going to have to get we're going to have to get a little creative. Just looking ahead, my plan for Sid, for group A strep gas is going to be to use Sid's house, all of the little characters and things there. Scarlet might be like the, the, the weird woman like thing. So we'll have to pick out some characters here and go crazy. But for now, I guess we can keep using Sid's room. Characters, we'll make a scene, we'll figure something out. Okay, so this is going to be, I don't know why that has a six on it. It really doesn't matter. Let's change this, that'll be a three. Four, five, six. Maybe like the army men about face. Hey, that works. So this isn't a streptococcus, but it used to be. And it just, I needed a sixth thing for this. So let's, yeah, let's, let's say the army men. Is there an army thing? Oh, I actually didn't know that. Military helmet. Okay. Face Salus and Facium. So there's two here. Facium is going to be the really important one here that we need to know. Hospitals and nosocomials. Toss those in. I should come up with a story here. All right. I guess we could walk into the hallway for this. We walk out into the hallway. Uh, as we've been summoned by Sarge for a special mission. I, I guess it doesn't look like there's a tr there's no treatment mentioned here. I'll have to double check that. By the hallway, as we've been summoned by Sarge for a special mission, mission, mission he asks us to about face before, before receiving our brief. It's enterococcus. We're just going to call it facium.
because we want to face him. Right, I should just remember that face him because we want to face him. So really no treatment mentioned for this. often resolve without antibiotics. I think that's the important thing there. Okay. He takes us into a medical tent where every soldier has been inflicted with enterococcus. This reminds us that this is the second most common hospital nosocomial infection. I think Staph aureus is the first. It's the number one, yeah, I have to find that. It might have just been mentioned on the set. Sometimes they're just mentioned as a first on the second slide. So it's a medical tent. We want to know this is a hospital. This is a nosocomial infection. Hospital nosocomial infection. Okay, two species the most resistant and causes vancomycin enterococcus. Um, the phone ring, the big, the, the red phone rings, and it's the, I don't know, the general of the plastic soldiers, and they wanna to talk to us. We pick up an answer and they ask, and they inform us that we're working with what's called vancomycin resistant enterococcus or VRE, specifically caused by that enterococcus facium. So face them, face the music. Okay, most common enterococcal infection is a UTI because of indwelling cats. All right. We're now going to treat three patients. The first as an indwelling catheter and we ask the sarge how long has this been in oh indwelling catheter and in fact it's so long it's made of jump rope which is actually what they use to to repel down and the other soldiers are playing are jumping through it jumping with it. We asked the Sarge, how long has this catheter been in? And he says, weeks. This reminds us that the most common enterococcal infection is a UTI because of indwelling cats. This also reminds us that the treatment is just to change out the cat and that most enterococci, passi, I'm so bad at pronouncing things, infections resolve without 
antibiotics. So we'll kind of remember that when we try to go to the treatment for this. Okay, our second patient is clutching his chest. And then, you know what? That's the entire tent suddenly gets hit with a mortar shell. But we realized it was chemical warfare and they all start clutching their chests because they have endocarditis. There's a big thing here that says, Factory me without endocarditis. But then the next slide is risk factors for endocarditis. Uh, okay. So they have endocarditis. However, they can get bacteremia without it. I guess it's I guess that's not common. This one's a little bit off the rails. Okay. The last patient. is undergoing open heart surgery. Yes, a plastic toy. And is an elderly man who has elderly man who has who is getting too old for this shit. He has all four valves replaced, <laughs> putting him at a higher risk. And then, yeah, a new murmur. Oslard's nose that heart that hurt. Janeway lesions, Roth spots in the eye. What else? you know, putting him at a higher risk. Elderly man. Okay, not my favorite combination, but we're just going to do, um, I feel pretty strong with the other ones. We'll just do that one and then, and then we're going to take a break. Okay, so we walk out into the hallway. This is enterococcus facium. So we we about face to face the army men. Treatment here, there's not any mention because this resolves without antibiotics. All right, we walk into the tent and we see we're in a medical tent, all right? So this is to remind us, this is the second most common cause of nosocomial infections. One is gonna be staph aureus. Um, then we get a phone call and they say, listen, this is, van this is VRE, it's vancomycin resistant enterococcus specifically caused by enterococcus facium, okay? Now we're gonna treat three patients. So we go over to the first one and he has a big indwelling catheter. It's a jump rope. The guys are jumping over it. Just to remind us, indwelling catheters, big cause of this here. And actually the UTI from this indwelling catheter, most common presentation, almost forgot that. We go over to the second patient. Um, remember the third one. Oh no, there's not three patients. We go over to the second one. Oh. Then all the, all the, it gets hit by a mortar shell. Um, they clutch their chest. They get endocarditis. However, you can get bacteremia without endocarditis. Whatever. Then we go over to the last patient. This is an older gentleman. Um, he has every single valve replaced, all risk factors for endocarditis. Rot spots, Osler's ouch, et cetera. Um, so that's it. Usually... At the end of a sitting, I'll like to go through and, and do all these one more time, but I'll make sure at least by the end of the night to go through all of these one more time. I like to, you know, make sure you space it out by like an hour. And then the most important thing is going to be to do these tomorrow morning, do an entire run through tomorrow morning, highlight anything that I missed. And then you just kind of repeat I, I, again, I don't have to 
write out notes. I don't have to do anything. I can tell you about all of these now as a complete picture. I, I love this way of studying. Okay, so we finished way too much stuff open. We finished half of what we wanted to finish in terms of uh, streptococcus. So another setting about another sitting about the length of time we did today, we'll finish group A, group B, and group D. So that's going to be, uh, that'll be six subjects total. Um, staff arias, it's a lot. Again, it is all just staff arias itself. I'm actually going to save that for last. And then these, these are actually very straightforward. So after I'm done all the strep, I'm going to go ahead and just knock out all the clostridium and all this, because these are just, these are just groups of five. Uh, and then we should be fine. So that's it for now. And we'll see you in the next one.